to Lone Bonn Airport, Germany. It's 2 a.m. and we're in the cockpit of a Paris-bound Boeing 767 of the Danish air cargo company Star Air. It's one of hundreds of flights that crisscross European skies every night, delivering packages and documents. In this edition of Fly, we're looking at ways that those journeys are being made more efficient. But first, let's check out what happens before a flight like this. Cologne Bonn Airport is the European air hub of parcel delivery service UPS. Every night, this huge facility handles packages from and heading to cities all over the world. They're processed at a rate of 110,000 items per hour. 30 kilometers of conveyor belts carry packages that have to be delivered early next morning. They travel on a UPS fleet of 36 planes, plus charter outfits like Star Air. Between 11 at night and 2.30 in the morning, planes arrive, their cargo sorted and redirected to its final destination. Timing is everything. Operational-wise, uh, I, I prefer uh, night, night flights. It, it makes it a little bit easier with the direct routing. There is less holdings. After five to ten minutes in the air, we always request uh, some di direct routes to gain just uh, time. We are also looking for the optimum altitude uh, all the time. Starting first with night flights, Europe is introducing a program of more direct aviation routes, making journeys shorter and more efficient. One place where they're redesigning those routes is Eurocontrol's Maastricht Upper Air Control Center. There, air traffic controllers manage the higher altitude airspace of Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Northwest Germany. We can check out the same route that our cargo flight is taking as one of the Eurocontrol managers outlines the advantages of their night network program. We are able to offer the airlines 115 new, much more direct routes available just at night. It works out at a saving of around 4,000 tonnes of fuel in a year. This means a big reduction in the impact on the environment. A normal flight plan between Cologne, which is there, and Paris usually follows a route that zigzags somewhat to avoid military areas. We've managed to realign this route so it's virtually a straight line to Paris. New routes to make flights more efficient are part of something called the Single European Sky, a European Commission initiative to harmonize the region's airspace. The man in charge of the program explains the advantages. Single sky means that we can travel in European skies without having to be diverted by borders. The advantage is the routes will be shorter. The aircraft can fly directly where it has to, thereby using less fuel, leading to less pollution. Our work began in 2004 and we hope that in 2012 there will be a big advance. That's when we'll have groups of countries starting to work together, using what we call functional airspace blocks. Inside these blocks we'll manage the airspace in a new way. With the single European sky legislation, the current airspace will be reorganized into nine functional airspace blocks according to aircraft operational needs rather than national boundaries. The first block will be the FAB for Central Europe, or FABEC, which accounts for 55% of all European traffic and is located above or near Europe's major airports. Not everyone is happy with the changes, particularly the trade union group representing air traffic controllers. Last year, the French controllers went on strike in protest at job cuts linked to the new airspace system. The strike was because of the French decision to establish the functional airspace block Europe Central, FABEC, by merging services. We can't accept that as a union, because merging services means shutting down centres. It means outsourcing and cutting staff. We believe this merger of services is not necessary for setting up the Single Sky programme and that this can be done in other ways. 
indispensable à la mise en œuvre du ciel unique et qu'il y a d'autres façons de le faire. Questo significa che potrebbe essere there could be cost cuts without cutting the numbers of staff. C'est complètement l'idée hein nous on pense que That's exactly it. We think it's necessary to have an international dimension to improve the service, but the unions don't believe we can do that through staff cuts, especially when there are alternatives. En ayant des objectifs de réduction d'emploi, surtout qu'il y a des façons alternatives de le faire. Changing the way we fly faces challenges and not only from a technical point of view. Establishing the single European sky means that every country must surrender a part of its sovereignty and must actively cooperate. So what are the potential problems? It's a big challenge. EU member states and national governments have to agree to handing over air traffic control to another entity. It's a big challenge. But there's also a second element. As well as commercial airliners and private planes, there's also the military, which means civilian authorities and the military have to work together at the European level. Meanwhile, our 767 cargo plane is approaching Paris at the end of a shorter flight thanks to the new route network. The night network is not the only program in the Single European Sky initiative. There are several others, one of which is a first step towards the still far-off goal of free flight, that is, direct flights from any starting point to any destination. Based on the Fabec Night Network, we decided to pursue a new concept, the Free Route Airspace Maastricht. That's a space where we'll allow the operators, the airlines, to plan a route, so they're completely freed from having to follow the network of airway routes. On that basis, taking a shortcut would become the rule rather than the exception. An example is a flight between London Stansted and Rigge in Norway. The usual route for the airlines is marked here in red, overflying the Netherlands. Now we can take into account traffic here at the border with the UK and provide a more direct route up by Denmark. Brussels believes that shorter routes in a harmonized European airspace would mean not only cheaper and less environmentally damaging flights, but also a more efficient platform for the future development of air traffic.